Imagine a banking system that uses SQL as a database and user A wants to deposit some money into user B's account. What happens if they send the money, we take this money out of their account balance and then suddenly our database crashes. Does this mean that the money that we took out of user A's balance disappeared? Well, not with SQL databases because they use SQL transactions for these kind of scenarios. Transactions are a sequence of one or more SQL operations performed as a single atomic unit. And the purpose of this is to ensure data consistency in the database. A transaction has the following properties, which are often referred to by the ACID acronym. A stands for the atomicity, which means that the entire transaction is treated as a single unit, which either completely succeeds or completely fails. C stands for consistency, which means that transaction transforms the database from one valid state to another valid state. Isolation ensures that modifications made by concurrent transactions are isolated from one another until they are committed. And durability ensures that once a transaction has been committed, it remains there even in the event of a system failure. The key commands in SQL transactions are begin transaction, which marks the starting point of an explicit transaction. Next, we can commit the transaction, which will save all the changes made during the transaction to the database. And in case one step of the transaction failed, we can do a rollback that will revert all the changes made during the transaction and returning the database to its state at the beginning of the transaction. In our example, where we need to transfer, let's say, $100 from account A to account B, will involve two steps, deducting the amount from account A and adding it to account B. And both steps need to be completed for the transaction to be successful. Here is how the SQL transaction would look like. We start by doing begin transaction to ensure the following operations are part of a single atomic process. Then we deduct $100 from account A and next we check if the account has sufficient funds. If the account doesn't have enough money, the transaction is rolled back using rollback transaction and cancelling all changes. Otherwise, if account A has enough money, then the $100 is added to the account B. And in case both updates are successful, only then we commit the transaction, which is executed to permanently apply the changes made during the transaction to the database. This will ensure that both accounts are updated appropriately and if there is an issue at any point, none of the changes are applied, maintaining the integrity of the data. We also have isolation layers in database transactions, which determine how transaction integrity is maintained and to what extent each transaction is isolated from one another. The first layer is read uncommitted, which is the lowest level of isolation. Here, transactions can see changes made by other transactions even before they are committed. So in our example, if we are transferring money and another transaction is updating the balance of account A or B, this transaction might read these uncommitted values and it can lead to issues like seeing a balance that doesn't actually exist. Next layer is read committed, which ensures that a transaction can only read data that has been committed. This level will avoid the issues of read uncommitted by ensuring that only committed balances of account A and B are read. However, if the balance is read multiple times within the transaction, it might see different values if other transactions are modifying it. That's why we have the next layer which is repeatable read. It ensures that if a transaction reads data a second time, it will find the same data values. This level will prevent the transaction from seeing changes made by others between multiple reads of the same data within the transaction. However, it might not prevent phantom reads, and for that we have serializable level. It is the highest level of isolation. Here transactions are completely isolated from each other, as if they are executed serially. This will ensure complete isolation, no other transactions can interfere with the transfer process and it prevents all concurrent issues, but it adds the cost of reduced concurrency and potential performance issues due to locking. And with different isolation layers, several phenomena can occur. The first one is being dirty reads. A dirty read can occur when a transaction reads data that has been written by a concurrent, uncommitted transaction. For example, if the first transaction starts and transfers some money from account A to B, before transaction was is committed, transaction 2 starts and reads the balance of account A. 
If the first transaction fails and rolls back, the second transaction has read a balance that never was officially committed. Next one is non-repeatable reads. This happens when a row is retrieved twice and the values within the row differ between reads. Essentially, another transaction modifies the row between the two reads. For example, transaction 1 starts and reads the balance of account A and then transaction 2 transfers $100 from account A to B and commits. And then the first transaction reads the balance of account A again and sees different balance than before. And the last one is phantom read, which occurs when in course of transaction new rows are added by another transaction to the records that are being read. For example, if the first transaction starts a query to count the number of transactions of account A and then the second one inserts a new transaction record for account A and commits and then this transaction counts the same number of transactions for account A and finds more transactions than before. And by increasing the isolation layers, we can reduce the types of phenomena but with the downside of lower concurrency and potential performance impacts. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to not miss the upcoming SQL replication and sharding tutorial.